Gus founded Project Assistance in 1996 to transform our client's approach to portfolio and project management to achieve a standard of excellence in execution that consistently delivers expected project outcomes. Gus is a portfolio and project management expert. He is a published author of many popular articles and books on the subject of portfolio and project management and a frequent speaker on this topic at regional and national events. Gus? Thank you, Jan. Thanks, everybody, for joining us this afternoon. I'd like to start off with just a brief review of the agenda. We're going to uh, have a, uh, some folks, uh, multiple people involved in this presentation. I'll start off uh, by taking an overview of the best practices for the topic today. Uh, the, the process and theoretical framework for uh, why, why we do this and what the best practices are. Uh, putting the process in context with uh, technology change management and people. Uh, talk about some of the actual uh, ways uh, that this integration occurs. And uh, a quick review of what we call a tactical plan for implementation and adoption. Um, at that point, uh, my colleague Dan McGee from Microsoft uh, we'll rejoin the presentation to take you through an overview of the technology that we're planning to show today. Uh, our consulting colleague, Michael Steinberg, is going to show the integrated technology demonstration. So the point again today is, is integration. So he's going to show how we take uh, uh, an idea through Portfolio Server, how we then execute a project through Project Server, and how we can do the knowledge management or, or project lifecycle methodology delivery of the goods, if you will, through Microsoft Office SharePoint Server, talk about some next steps, open it up for questions and answers. So the first thing I want to talk about, just a, just a real brief overview. When we talk about this concept of uh, project portfolio and lifecycle management, just to give a picture here, primarily what we're going to talk about first is this idea of how do we uh, have a uh, strategize for an organization to do the right projects, then ultimately from, from an execution standpoint, really two halves of the conversation. The bottom right half, how do we deliver on time on budget? What are the business controls? The bottom left half, what's the knowledge management or what we also call uh, life cycle management? What are the methodologies employed to in fact deliver the outputs of the project as expected? Uh, just a real brief look at some of the sub-processes within portfolio management. We're really about, if you will, the ideal onboarding process. So how does an organization build a strategy and then capture ideas about how to meet that strategy, to formulate uh, the, the, uh, the key metrics required to, to meet the strategy uh, of an idea. For example, return on investment, amount of risk, uh, uh, benefit to the, uh, to the organization, alignment with project, uh, or I'm sorry, overall organizational objectives, how we evaluate those ideas against one another, how we select those ideas, how we then define uh, detailed plans and, and move into delivery of the overall project capabilities. From a, from a project execution standpoint, if we talk about you know, delivering on time and on budget or, in fact, establishing some business controls in a project-based environment, we're really talking about these sub-processes of how we uh, define an initial uh, charter or scope, uh, how we plan and organize a project in the yellow box as we move into execution and control, how we track status, manage risk, manage scope, uh, identify variances and the causes of those variances, and uh, communicate the status. Also involved in here is replanning in those cases where the variances uh, need to be replanned. And finally, the project completion and continuous improvement. And lastly, this idea of life cycle management, what we're really talking about are the types of projects we're managing, or if you will, the content of the work breakdown structure. What are the tasks that need to be performed to provide the project deliverables? So in other words, if I'm doing consumer product development, there's a methodology, maybe a stage gate methodology we might employ or uh, a new product life cycle management, a PLM, if you will, product life cycle management methodology. Software development has its own unique uh, methodologies. We've got things like agile, uh, traditional software development life cycles like top-down structured uh, analysis, architectural engineering and design, uh, or construction management, if you will. Biopharma development has its own methodology, government, just to name a few examples. So overall context, when we really talk about an integrated process framework, we're talking about how we deliver the right projects, I'm sorry, how we, how we propose and select the right projects through a portfolio management process, how we then manage those projects or a set of business controls. And notice that these sit over top of the vertical processes 
for the methodologies, but ultimately what we're looking at is how we produce the project deliverables. So we see portfolio management, project management, life cycle management. How do we integrate these things? Why is it important to integrate these things? So if we put these processes in context, the other thing I, I wanted to mention this afternoon is in context, if we talk about process, by definition, we're really talking about uh, the application of some kind of theory, right? So the processes we talk about could be portfolio management processes, they could be project management processes, they could be life cycle management processes. Ultimately, we're taking theoretical frameworks and making them process specific to the organization. In order to enable these processes, oftentimes we apply technology and tools, which is uh, the heart of the presentation today, which we'll get to in a few minutes. Uh, to, to bring the process and the tools together, we're talking about typically uh, not only applying people capabilities, but oftentimes improving those capabilities. So the thought of how do we take the process, how do we automate it, how do we get people to then embrace it and understand it and actually run the process, and all that comes together through the concept of change management. To bring these three pieces together, we need to have change management, and uh, at the center of all this is some kind of executive support. We don't see uh, the integration in our experience of portfolio management, project management, and life cycle management through the uh, starting of a grassroots movement. You know, it, it, it's a top-down supported kind of initiative from the executive areas. So in terms of best practices, what we're, what we're really talking about here is how, how would you do this? You know, if, if we think it's important, if, you know, in today's hypothesis that it's worth integrating portfolio management, project management, and knowledge management, so we deliver the right projects through portfolio management, we deliver those projects on time and on budget through project management, and we deliver the spec with life cycle management, how, in fact, would we accomplish this? Taking these three different kinds of processes and bringing them together into a cohesive uh, view of the world. And, and typically, what we talk about are really three major blocks of activities. The, the upfront scoping activities or assessment activities where we look at a current state, where you would look at a current state of your portfolio project and life cycle environment, what the desired end state is, what does Nirvana look like for your organization, what the gap is, and then what the plan is to close that gap. So that's really what we talk about from an assessment, strategic charter, and tactical plan standpoint. The way to really, at the end of the day, the result of the tactical plan is really to scope an effort. If the organization is going to embark on a plan for change in the portfolio, project, and life cycle management areas, how do we, in fact, develop that plan such that when we get down to requirements of what's going to be, in fact, uh, implemented, that we have some sense of, of what's in scope and out of scope. For example, if we were to talk about the maturation of time management, a fast example would be, you know, Nirvana might look like level five optimizer says historical variance data is utilized across all projects so we can know where we've been good, where we've been bad, and how we can get better. So how can we use historical information to, to run our projects better? So an example of of a tactical plan might be that if today we are at level one, no formal time estimating techniques, project plans are not status for labor cost or schedule, projects are not baseline, meaning we're not capturing the original estimate, but we want to get to, let's say, level three. Actual time is introduced, tracking is introduced, critical paths are defined, formal baselining is applied, change control processes are in place and labor is tracked. There's a logical progression. There's a plan in place that would say, we're going to start here, we're going to move through level two, we're going to get to level three, and hopefully we're going to get to level four where we begin to, if you look at the last sentence of level four, it says labor is tracked at the work breakdown structure level of detail. So an improvement plan to integrate these things looks like taking, that, taking and breaking down all the major project management components and putting an improvement plan in place so that we can then uh, have an alignment of process technology and people capabilities. Ultimately, that looks like a tactical plan. So at the end of the strategy comes the charter or the, or the scope of the project to, include, to, to integrate portfolio project and life cycle management. So, for example, um, one of the things a plan would typically address is, are we going to do portfolio management well first, or, or are we going to do project management well first? So the, uh, with the title of the slide says, which came first, the project or the portfolio? Oftentimes, the experience that we've had in this area is that there's an emphasis 
on where there's the greatest opportunity for improvement. Because there's a real concern about the way projects are being selected and put into a portfolio, and there's a real concern in the organization that the right projects aren't being selected, or once we select a project that we're not uh, governing the overall process well, we're not uh, deflecting or divesting of bad projects. If, uh, if the train leaves the station, meaning the project, and we find out that the bridge is out ahead, are we going to stop the train? You know, if there are the challenges facing the organization on the left-hand side in terms of how we collect ideas, how we manage business cases, how we uh, review, rate, and evaluate, and select and approve the right projects, there's a very good chance that we're talking about a tactical plan whose initial focus will be in the portfolio planning area. If, on the other hand, there's concerns about on-time, on-budget completion, then uh, we have a sense that our strategies are okay, we're picking the right projects, but, but, but really how we deliver those projects is, uh, is where the greatest opportunity for improvement is, we might see a project management focused tactical plan. And really in both cases, what, we, what we've seen in our experience is whether, whether we're doing portfolio management or project management, the first thing that gets attacked is the planning side. In other words, we're not going to execute a portfolio well if we can't plan it well. We're not going to execute a project well if we can't scope it and put some initial ideas down about what that project's budget and resource requirements are. It's awful hard to measure against a baseline if you don't have a baseline. So, so really the tactical plan is, is focused on answering the question of where, where does the initial attack go to and then where do subsequent attacks go to to leverage and to get a return on investment from those initial investments. So, so, so a tactical plan conceptually looks like a change management plan, number one, and number two, individual plans for process development and deployment, technology implementation, people capabilities improvement brought together into an overall plan. At the end of the day, that first phase I talked about, this assessment, uh, scoping assessment strategy offering or, or activity is really the first chance to say, well, before we go to uh, what, what, what Dan and Michael are going to talk about, this, you know, this technology platform, before we go to the requirements, installation, configuration, implementation, training, and rollout, we're going to get a sense of how are we trying to use this thing? What is the organizational goal? What's the charter? What's the mission? Then we go into an implementation rollout, and then lastly, we see adoption and governance. So in our experience, the ones in the middle that go well, the implementations that go well, are well supported on the left-hand side by a great strategy with a solid plan. And on the right-hand side, which is, I'll say, 75% of the effort, the adoption and governance that says, if we're going to get better at project management, if we're going to get better at portfolio management, how are we going to make sure we integrate our process and technology and people capabilities? What's the plan post-training to do coaching and mentoring of these new practitioners? What's the process adoption and audit? What's the governance that we are going to put in place to say if we're going to govern the project management, portfolio management to make sure it's happening, we're going to audit it, we're going to have a checkpoint, we're going to have reporting and escalation, we're going to have intervention and corrective actions, and we're going to provide ongoing support. So, so, so for the first part of the presentation today, we really wanted to just cover, you know, why is it important to think about integrating these three major process domains of portfolio, project, and life cycle management, and then what's the approach to accomplish that? So, so at this point of the presentation, what I'd like to do is I'd like to reintroduce Dan McGee from Microsoft. Uh, Dan's going to take you through an overview of the technology, and then Michael Steinberg is going to take you through a demonstration. Dan, take it away. Thanks, Gus. Now, Michael's going to lead us through a, a role-based technology demonstration, but before we start that, I want to quickly describe the user roles and the technology that we're going to show. So for the sake of today's presentation, there are three server technologies we're discussing. Microsoft Project Portfolio Server to handle management of the portfolio. Microsoft Project Server handling project, execu project execution against the defined portfolio. And Microsoft Office SharePoint Server, or MOS, to handle the knowledge management components like documents, unique approval workflows, collaboration, enterprise search, and content management, to name a few. The Microsoft Project Server and Portfolio Server applications are typically used by the types of people you see atop, atop, across the top of this slide. Some of the activities they might perform are in the boxes across the middle of the screen. Uh, so rather than read the actual bullets, I will comment on the fact that most of the functionality required to leverage the solution can be dubbed, done through a web interface. 
So if I'm an executive or portfolio manager working to optimize my portfolio through portfolio web access, a resource manager trying to manage capacity and demand through project web access, or a project team member who needs to report an issue via project web access, I access the portfolio and or the project server through the web. All the dashboard information can be delivered through SharePoint. Searching across knowledge components is handled through SharePoint, as is your day-to-day -day or group-to-group or, -group or intergroup project level type collaboration. Now, project as you've known it on the desktop or project professional is a required license only for project managers. And one thing that may surprise you today is just how much functionality project managers have on the web. Many of the activities traditionally required a, requiring a desktop license, such as building a small project plan or assigning resources to a project, that, that can now be done through a web interface. One other thing that may surprise you, um, you may already own the latest versions of these technologies and, and not know it. Uh, some of you may be using an older version of project, but you actually own the upgrade rights and, and you may not know it. Your local Microsoft team can help you determine what you own and what you don't own. And you may be pleased to find out that, uh, that you have existing investments to be leveraged or, uh, or, or at minimum cost-effective licensing vehicles in place to acquire licenses uh, for the technology that we're going to show you today, should you like it. So that is the, just a high-level overview of the technology that we're going to show you today. And now I would like to introduce to you uh, Michael Steinberg from Project Assistance. I have had the pleasure of working with Michael for over five years now. And Michael's had, had the chance to lead or support well over 30 implementations of Microsoft DPM technology. Michael's also a certified project management professional. So he understands the fine art of marrying sound process with supporting technology and uh, is, is ready to deliver an outstanding demonstration. Michael? Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Steinberg. Uh, Gus, if you could uh, turn the controls over to me. There we go. Thank you. And in just a second, you're going to see uh, the slide that, that I think we're going to be using as a, as a theme because the, the, the theme for today's presentation is, is going to be integration, integrating the portfolio management processes, project management processes, and uh, the, the broad area of knowledge management, which is life cycle management, as, as Gus has talked about it. And uh, the three tools that we're going to be looking at are uh, for portfolio management processes. Most of that happens within, uh, within Project Portfolio Server. Most of the project management processes happen within Project Professional and, uh, and, and, and Project Server, as well as the, the knowledge management and lifecycle management uh, transcend uh, those tools and also uh, is, is leveraged by the use of uh, Windows SharePoint services and uh, Microsoft Office SharePoint Server. So what we What we have, uh, let's start at the beginning of the process, and let's go to our primary dashboard for project managers, portfolio managers, uh, and, and all of the roles pretty much that uh, Gus has, uh, that Dan has alluded to. And this is the, the project web access homepage, which is basically a launch pad for uh, all of the functions that a portfolio manager, project manager, uh, functional manager, resource manager, executive stakeholder can, uh, can get to the various uh, tools that would support their, their business functions. So the, the first place I'm going to go is the portfolio server. And in portfolio server, we are basically covering the portfolio management process functions of central collection and management of project requests and uh, business case management. Portfolio Server contains three components. One is the builder, one is the optimizer, and, and one is the dashboard. So within the builder, we can look at, and this is a, a live demonstration, so it's really, it's, it's, it's really behaving live. Uh, we can look at an example of how the builder operates on allows a stakeholder to create a project request or a proposal 
or an opportunity. So what we're going to do is just take a look at one of these opportunities that has been, been created and watch how the business case is managed. So the business case essentially consists of uh, all of these components. It consists of generalized project information, budget cost information, resource information, benefits information, and if you look at the, the drop down, things like strategic impact, risks, issues, scheduled resource requirements. So there's, there's quite a plethora of information that a, uh, that a proposer, uh, be it a, a, a business manager or other type of stakeholder, can, can, can provide in, uh, in, in building the business case for this. And uh, just, just to give some examples, here's, here's a look at the, uh, the benefit estimates where you can look at uh, you can look at tangible or financial benefits. You can also look at intangible or non-financial benefits, as as shown here. Okay. If you want to look at the strategic impact of that initiative on some of the the business drivers that that the corporation has identified and prioritized, you can assign or align the, the, the level of impact that each of these initiatives could have on those business drivers. If you want to, for example, do a, an initial uh, high-level risk analysis, you can uh, assign different types of risks to of risks, and you can see that it, it automatically uh, uh, changes the, the, the risk profile. So not, not to dwell on this, but what we want to do now is show the next integration point between portfolio business case management and initial review, rating, and evaluation of those business cases. So still in Project Portfolio Server, we are going to move to the the optimizer module, and the optimizer module basically takes the inputs, which consist of the prioritized business drivers and new project requests, approved project requests, and their valuation against those business drivers and the prioritization. And what happens is the, the, the analyzer basically does a, a scientific analysis of which projects are going to give you the bang for the, the best bang for the buck, given your your company's strategic goals and how well each of them aligns to uh, to each of those strategic goals. So the first thing that we want to do is basically to look at some of those business drivers and make sure that those business drivers are aligned correctly. So the first exercise that a uh, that a set of stakeholders would do, probably in a facilitated session, would be to to look at all of those business drivers as they're compared to one another and uh, this, this should, uh, I need to refresh this page. Well, what, what can happen is Live technology is wonderful. The, the business drivers are ranked side by side against one another. And once, once the stakeholders have provided that analysis and come to a consensus, then basically the next thing that they want to do is take all of those initiatives that were set up in the, in the builder and as an integration point between the business case management and review rating and evaluation is essentially to 
show to assess the relative impact of each business driver of each initiative, which are uh, lined up along the left-hand side of your screen, and each of the business drivers that we have just prioritized. So basically, what we're looking at is, is a basically it's a heat map showing uh, how much impact each of these projects has on the various business drivers. So the next thing we can do is then basically tell the the uh, the, the prioritization engine to go ahead and uh, come up with a prioritized list of initiatives in terms of a bang for the buck and contribution to the overall. Um, to, to the, the overall total uh, impact of the portfolio. So basically, if all of these initiatives were to be executed, 100% of the portfolio strategic value would be achieved. But basically, the, this, first, uh, this first initiative, which would be the software testing upgrade, would basically account for 5%, and, and, and you, you could execute them in decreasing uh, amounts of, of bang for the buck. Now, one of the things that is uh, that is is really uh, very important here is is looking at it in a, in, a, in kind of a multi-dimensional way against certain other constraints because uh, there are financial constraints, there are resource constraints, there are risk constraints, all of which uh, impact the uh, the selection of projects. So, if uh, you know, if cost were not not were not a a factor, uh, it would be an ideal world. However, since we have a number of, of parameters that, that weigh on the, uh, the selection, we really do have to, you know, we wouldn't be doing a good job if we didn't take those into account. So what this, what this chart shows here is uh, what's known as an investment map. And an investment map basically allows you to, to see four dimensions within essentially a two-dimensional screen. So what we're looking at uh, along the, and, and I apologize for all the, all the refreshes here. Uh, we're looking at, along the horizontal axis, the total one-time cost of each initiative. Each bubble is an initiative. The vertical axis is the, the relative strategic value, but also the size and color are two additional dimensions. So the color, red, yellow, green, represents more high risk, and the size represents the, uh, the the net present value. So obviously, we want we want to think that the projects that would have the biggest bang for the buck would be the ones at the at the top left, which have the highest strategic value, the lowest cost, uh, the lowest risk, and the highest net present value. So this this green one here is really a no brainer. Obviously, this red one down on the on the far right would be would be something that would be would be a much lower priority. So this basically takes us through our selection and approval uh, phase of the portfolio management process. Now, the next phase that provides an integration point is once we have selected and approved these initiatives, we need to send them back to send them over to project server so that project management can uh, essentially take over and, and, and manage them as, as a project. And the way we do that is, is very simply through a tool called basically a project server gateway which allows us to integrate information from project portfolio server that we have have selected and essentially just transfer that information into project server automatically at uh, at the click of a button so we're going to use the the mass export feature of the project portfolio server and we are going to take that project that we have told our story about, the automatic processing system implementation, and uh, export that over into, uh, into project. So the next phase is basically 
taking this information as it's been passed across and, and, and applying some of our project management processes to that. So what we would be using for that, of course, would be Microsoft Office Project Professional. And so here is a project that has been uh, initiated and has gone through the processes of uh, needs identification, ideation, submission, and we are, and we have done that in essentially through Project Portfolio Server. And what we're, what we're, we are, we, where we are now is essentially in the, in the project scoping, scope adjustment, initial requirements, and project planning, scheduling, and controlling. Uh, I'm sorry, project planning and scheduling. So right now we are in Microsoft Project Professional, and as, as Gus said, Project Professional has a, a wealth of, of tools available for, for project planning, execution, uh, monitoring, and control. We're not going to go into all of those in, in the time we have, but again, I want to show you some of the integration points. So the first integration point we can see here between uh, the, the project management processes and the life cycle management processes is that this project has been created using a standard life cycle work breakdown structure template. In this case, it's, it's a, if you recognize it, it's a Microsoft solution framework template uh, you know, where we have the envisioning, planning, uh, executing, and uh, develop, developing and, uh, and stabilizing phases. So, you know, we are following a life cycle, and so our, our, our governance process is still in effect here. Now, to show another integration point between Project uh, Portfolio Server and Project Server is that, uh, remember on the, the Portfolio Builder screen, there were a whole number of attributes and descriptors by which we could describe our project. And the bridge, the gateway, has automatically ported all of that information over into Project Server so that the, the governance uh, alignment is, is basically preserved and you know, the, same, the same people who are responsible for, for governance uh, in the initial uh, business case management uh, selection review evaluation stages uh, maintain their, their control and their governance in the, the project planning and scheduling and eventually the execution stages. So our project is planned and uh, of course we can do you know all kinds of tools. We can do resource assignments, we can do uh, work effort uh, estimation, we can do resource leveling, we can do uh, baselining, we can do variance analysis and all of those things. Uh, but again, what I, what I want to show you again is, is uh, essentially some, some more integration points. Uh, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to, to go to uh, our next phase in the project management process, which is the execution and control phase down here. So we have essentially uh, gone through all of these phases And the first thing I'd like to show you is that when a project goes into execution, uh, there is a SharePoint site. It can be either a Windows SharePoint Services site or a MOS site uh, built automatically, provisioned automatically built for it so that we can actually go right into the site and that is associated with that project and essentially see uh, uh, quite a bit of information that is set up to, uh, to, to provide life cycle management, knowledge management. Uh, for example, one uh, aspect of life cycle management is a standardized set of artifacts and standardized organization of the artifact libraries for the project. So we're, uh, SharePoint and MOSS provide a very rich, robust uh, document management, uh, knowledge management capability that, uh, that essentially allows us to, to organize that information. Not only does it allow us to organize that information, but it allows us to, uh, to create that information based on some standard templates. So in MOSS and in SharePoint, 
you can create a doc you can create a document template that's called for example a project charter document or a project management plan document or a test plan document or a, or a requirements document template so you can create a whole list of of these kinds of templates and then when we actually go to instantiate our our project we can use those templates to make sure that a a uh, a standard process is and a standard of approved governance process and life cycle management process is is followed. So here's here's an example of that. And in in fact These documents can also be subject to uh, to workflows. So, sorry. So we can see here on the home page for that individual project that there are a number of tasks for this project manage manager uh, to do that relate to a workflow related to various uh, artifacts. So the workflows may dictate that certain individuals, certain stakeholders, certain groups have to approve the uh, various documents as part of a, a life cycle management plan. Uh, other aspects of the process, project, project execution and control process uh, have to do with monitoring and controlling the status and health of the various projects that are in the portfolio. So this basically uh, relates back to both project management and portfolio management, where we have a, uh, a screen called Project Center, which is basically a, a high-level uh, health indicator dashboard from information that has been created uh, and, and stored in Project Server uh, related to a project and we can show basically graphical indicators that indicate uh, whether or not the individual projects are on track in terms of their, their schedule and cost, whether they're over budget, under budget, uh, ahead of schedule, behind schedule, and, and by how much. And it allows uh, stakeholders, in addition, if there are any uh, problem projects, to essentially drill into the details of a project just by clicking on the name and to identify the specific phases or even down to the detailed tasks where the, uh, the problems might occur. Now there are also some additional capabilities that are available in, in MOSS that have to do with some of the business intelligence capabilities of MOSS that, that, can, be, uh, that can be built to provide a high-level high level portfolio management and project management capabilities. So, so this essentially, some of these dashboards that, we're, that I'm about to show you allow us to, to basically integrate the whole portfolio management process and project management process. So basically, it, it will allow high-level stakeholders to essentially see the performance of the entire portfolio. It will allow, uh, allow them to drill into different departments, different programs, different initiatives within the portfolio, and also basically to go down to actually the individual project level to look at the health of those individual projects. So one of these is what we call a portfolio dashboard that has uh, some very nice graphics that, that can be uh, constructed using some of the business intelligence features of, of MOSS as well as, um, as, as being able to use a, uh, a MOSS or even a SharePoint screen to, uh, to lay out these, these, these uh, graphical components. So we can see here some, some very nice dashboard information. But one of the things that has, has caught our attention is that uh, operations, in terms of its, its KPIs, 
are is yellow. So this to be a problem there. So let's drill into that for just a sec. And we can then drill right down from the portfolio dashboard into a departmental dashboard, a divisional dashboard, uh, an initiative or program dashboard, uh, depending on how you want to set it up. And this can provide you know, similar information. It can provide earned value information. It can provide some high-level uh, traffic light indicators on some KPIs, such as, as health overall health, schedule, costs, risks, and issues on various projects. So we happen to see that within operations, this production employee retraining is red on a lot of counts, and we want to see, well, what, what is the problem that is, that is driving that? So we can click on that, and we actually get taken right back to our, our project, uh, project detail screen in, in, um, in Project Web Access. But the other thing that we can do is we can click on the report icon, and what that will do is it will bring up a project dashboard that essentially shows our, uh, our KPI average over health schedule costs, risks, and issues. Uh, some are red, some are yellow. Uh, gives us some initial project information, some stat status and cost information. It basically is showing us our earned value trend, and finally, it has a a list of milestones, risks, and issues. So basically, uh, what we've tried to show in these last few minutes is how uh, portfolio management, project management, and life cycle management uh, can be integrated with the use of uh, portfolio server, project professional, project server, and uh, SharePoint, including SharePoint services and, and SharePoint server. And I hope that you feeling for, uh, for, for the fact that it is, it is, it is fairly seamless. Uh, there, there are some integration points that allow information to, to go back and forth and to be managed by the proper stakeholders with, uh, with a minimum of, uh, of, of, of double entry and, and, and basically a fairly streamlined process. So you know, again, we're, we're going to hold questions to the end, but what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to turn the uh, turn the session back to Gus so that uh, he can tell, tell you a little bit about project assistance and who we are and what we do. Thank you, Michael. Just a, a couple uh, brief slides of next steps. We'll get to the uh, question and answers. Uh, if, if you are interested in uh, understanding any way in which we can help, it might not surprise you to know that by delivering this webinar, we in fact uh, run a consulting business in this space. So if there's an interest in understanding uh, you know, how you could really determine the requirements for a successful portfolio and project management implementation and improvements in your organization with process technology and people capabilities, uh, we can schedule a you know, complimentary maturity improvement readiness briefing uh, to discuss with you what, what's required. Uh, to do this well, what we've seen in our experience, I'll set you up for success looking at some typical improvement areas around project management reporting, technology environment, uh, resource planning, uh, portfolio project management governance. Uh, we have a methodology we use, which I briefly reviewed in the, pre in the first half of the presentation, uh, to look at your current state and future state, to develop that roadmap, and to really look at some common uh, challenges that are out there. Um, some. Uh, Technology deployments that, that, that haven't gone well, in which uh, we see uh, lots of cases where the technology is deployed, and when we take a closer look, uh, the technology is being blamed for the uh, inability of the organizational effectiveness, when in fact it's that whole three column slide that I talked about earlier. So there's, uh, there, there's some ill conceived technology deployments out there, and they have a harmful effect. You know, it's like, well, we tried to do this once and it didn't work, so we're, we're not sure we can get it right. Uh, we can look at common training and competency development shortcomings with the people and how that affects success, and also the methodology and process guidance required to make this all work well. So if you're interested in talking about some next steps, um, please contact Jan. I also noticed there were some, uh, some questions about content and access to the content that we reviewed today. You can also direct those questions directly uh, to Jan's contact information, as you see on the console. And uh, also coming up is a, a deeper review of the subject we touched on today, this concept of which came first, the project or the portfolio. Uh, if you go to our website, you'll see the, uh, the details out there. The, uh, I think it's the March 31st registration date, and uh, I believe we're open for registration. 
And finally, before I get to the questions, just a brief uh, overview of project assistance. As I said, we you know we have a consulting business. Really, it's our it's our job to make the world a better place for project management. And the way we do that is by transforming our clients' approach to project and portfolio management to really achieve a standard of excellence in execution. So it's about delivering, right? At the end of the day, it's about getting to the desired outcomes. Uh, the barriers we run into are the things we have to deal with every day, which is uh, some concern about, you know, this is risky. So our methodology introduces a way to reduce the risk of the investment that needs to be made and, and having that investment be worthwhile. Uh, maximizing the return on investment, usually done through, uh, through baby steps, if you will, uh, delivering small uh, successes, creating continued mood towards investment. Uh, speeding the realization of value closely tied, closely tied uh, to maximizing ROI is getting something out there sooner rather than later. Uh, this technology is uh, mature. Um, it's, it's a standard. It's Microsoft. Um, pilots can be deployed relatively quickly, and then follow-on deployments can also build on top of that. And, and the concept of driving effective organizational change. This stuff only works if we change the culture. So that's what our job is. Our practice areas are the project and portfolio management services that we already discussed, strategies, implementation, training, uh, follow-up, adoption, and support. Uh, collaboration around SharePoint, we have a number of services we can offer there. Uh, we do deliver education and competency development. We deploy those uh, at our client site. We have application development, specifically on the Microsoft platform. Uh, project management outsourcing, so project man management as a service, not so much on the hourly or, uh, basis, but potentially on a service level basis. And finally, we actually staff projects. So if you have projects that are in need of uh, project managers, if you've had your head count cut at your organization, if you don't know how you're going to get your projects done, uh, this is something we do for a living. And we bring a process with us. We don't just throw project managers on the ground and wish them luck, but we actually bring a, uh, a definitive project and portfolio management process with those, pro with, with those project managers. So uh, at this point, what I'd like to do is I'm going to field some questions that have come in. Uh, we had a number come in uh, over the period of this uh, presentation. Uh, some I may have answered along the way, but I don't want to be too presumptuous. So I'm going to start off with the question from Sean. Uh, is it our experience that the project management levels that are interested in project management, I'm sorry, the management levels that are interested in uh, project management versus portfolio management are mutually exclusive? And if, if so, should that be fixed? And I would say yes, in some cases they are exclusive. Uh, certainly when we talk to the folks responsible for delivering projects, they care a little bit less about whether they're the right projects that they may not be involved. Um, at the portfolio level, um, uh, there's t I, I use a metaphor for below the clouds. You know, the people who sit in the castle can't see what's happening below the clouds, so uh, the, uh, the burning and the carnage happening below the clouds isn't necessarily always the concern of the portfolio managers, but what that's the bad news. The good news is um, if you get up high enough in an organization, there's a common reporting point where somebody does care about the right project being done right, and that's really where the integration point typically exists. Uh, so, Sean, I hope, I hope that answers your question. If not, feel free to reach out to Jan and we can discuss that further. Uh, William uh, asked the question, is knowledge management then the capture of project content deliverables like requirements, design components, test scenarios, and results, training materials, et cetera? And I would say uh, the fast answer, William, is yes. You hit the nail on the head. Uh, some of the examples you use around test scenarios and design and requirements and training materials, probably more of an IT uh, life cycle methodology. So, Knowledge management, is, as you may know, most of you probably do know, is a, is a broad discipline. Um, when we talk about life cycle management, we're really talking about project knowledge management, the knowledge necessary to run the project outside of the business controls. Project management is the business controls. Life cycle management is, is yes, deliver, managing those deliverables and, and the outcomes of the project. Uh, I assume Jan answered the question about available for download. If not, uh, Cesar will get that answer back to you. Uh, Jay can send some information about that. Uh, moving down to the questions about getting closer to the mic. Let me see if I can find one. Uh, is what you are showing part of the standard Moss Cal? And uh, I didn't catch that exactly when the question was asked, but uh, the standard Moss, Moss Cal comes with uh, Microsoft Office SharePoint Server. If you watch the whole demonstration, you would have seen a portfolio server Cal a project server cal and a boss cal uh, at different points in the presentation. So if you can reckon back to the process we were covering, that's the cal you were likely looking at. Um, the webinar will be recorded. So for Joan, you asked that question. 
And uh, I have another question here. Given a prospect with a minimum level of maturity, how long would it take to bring an organization up to speed to be fully implemented set of tools and some usable value out of the project data in the tools? Uh, the upfront assessment process we put out there, uh, depending on the organization size, for a small organization, two to four weeks. Uh, larger organizations tend to run four to eight. We start getting into multiple sites, multiple divisions. That would change a little bit. Uh, so a small number of weeks, typically for the upset, um, upfront assessment, strategy, tactical plan, which really sets the scope in the charter. Uh, the middle component, the deployment of the technology to a pilot state, I'll say at a general level, four to six weeks, we get some initial value out of that. Uh, the last part, the ongoing, uh, the, the adoption support would really be, as I mentioned, that's about 75% of the effort in general. If I can just, uh, just reckon back to that slide there quickly. Uh, the, the last part is the greatest variable that you might see. Uh, the process technology training integration, coaching, mentoring, process adoption and audit, reporting and escalation, intervention and ongoing support. It's really in that adoption governance that we usually see a pilot move out to a broader implementation. Uh, so if we're saying four to six weeks for a, a pilot uh, and, and you know, let's say another, uh, maybe we're two, three months into it, maybe a year to get a full implementation out there. And when I say full, I'm talking for a larger organization. But back to your original question, well, if you get initial value, usable value out of these project data and these tools, I would say usable value can come out of a pilot. And if the upfront charter and scoping is done properly, uh, clearly, uh, you know, we get initial value out of the pilot. That would hopefully be one of the points of the charter is to get some of that initial value. Uh, Mark, I think we had another question there. And Dan, I think this might be a question we we're going to send over to you. Uh, it says, you mentioned earlier uh, we, that we might already own the necessary licenses and not even know it. How do we find out if we already own these licenses? So, Dan, if, you could, Dan, if you're still there, if you could address um, this idea that this technology platform we just showed, showed oftentimes uh, is already in the organization waiting for deployment. Could yeah. you just explain that a little bit? Yeah, sure, sure thing, Gus. Um, I, I guess as the, as the first line of defense, I would, I would recommend that you reach out to your local Microsoft account team, specifically enterprise project management specialists like myself. We're, uh, we're basically paid to know what, what it is that you own and what it is that you don't and help you figure out the most cost-effective way to, uh, to acquire licenses. The other thing that you may want to do uh, internally is you can talk to your IT procurement contact and, and Probably the, f the best first question to ask is whether or not you have an enterprise ag uh, an enterprise agreement with Microsoft. Now you can also ask whether or not your company typically buys software from Microsoft with software assurance. Software assurance is what gives you the upgrade rights, and uh, there there are many there are many users out there, customers out there who are using older versions of software, but actually do have software assurance and may not be aware of that. So. Um, I, I would uh, I would definitely reach out to your Microsoft team, and I would also reach out to any IT procurement contact that you have internally. That's about it, Gus. Okay, thank you, Dan. And that, uh, that concludes our questions. I did have uh, one final reminder from one of my colleagues here to let you know that uh, we did record today's session, and uh, we'll we'll be capturing that recording and posting it to our website, and it is expected be out there by tomorrow. So if you go to projectassistance.com, as you see on your screen, and uh, click into events uh, from the home page, you should be able to see not only today's events, but the previous events. Uh, there's about six of them out there. And uh, each time we do one of these webinars, they do become available uh, the following day, typically. So uh, assuming that we haven't had any uh, uh, post-production problems today, uh, we haven't yet had a, a chance to test the audio. If everything's uh, up, to, up to speed and, and up to standards, you'll see it tomorrow. Uh, I want to thank you all, uh, Dan and, and Michael, for, uh, for joining me today, and Jan for your introductions. And uh, a special thanks to everybody who took time out of their busy day uh, to join us, and uh, look forward to hearing from you in the future. Thank you.